Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. We're still talking about ecosystem structure and function, and we're going to talk some about some concepts related to the idea that it's very difficult to see where ecosystems are headed sometimes and how they might respond to disturbance. Uh, humans are creating a lot of disturbance in the environment these days with pollution and satisfying all these wants and needs we have. Uh, you know, wh how, how does somebody studying ecosystems uh, look at that? How can they make predictions? Okay, so we, we've mentioned predictions on how ecosystems react. It's, it's very difficult. Why is that? One is that there's general uncertainty. We don't know how every component of an ecosystem will react to, to different stimuli. So that can be, uh, you know, additive, multiplicative. You know, uh, those, those uncertainties add up, really. The other thing is stochastic behavior. Um, you know, there's some components, some forcing functions, the ecosystems will probably never be able to um, adi adequately predict. An example is um, weather. You know, uh, 10 years from now, we might have an understanding of climate, but for, a we for weather for a certain day, probably impossible. So if we're trying to do predictions of how ecosystems will react, we don't know if the chance storm will run through. That becomes difficult uh, to manage. The other thing is just general complexity. Uh, ecosystems are complicated. When you guys built those systems diagrams for the whole planet, you could see that clearly. There's just so many components and so much uh, uncertainty that, that that makes it difficult. Uh, an, an example of this is uh, wind patterns and fish, fish production. Uh, El Nino affects the currents right off the coast of Peru and they can slow down uh, the wind patterns that help create upwellings in, in basically off of Peru and that creates, um, well that slows down uh, blooms of algae and fish production so the wind patterns in certain parts of the, the world can affect the fish production off of Peru and you might not really see that coming. Another uh, problem is the hierarchies. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, in, in the general sense, uh, in biology, you've probably done this in high school, uh, you have the cells, and the cells make up the tissues, which make up the organs, which make up the organ systems, and then the organism. Um, different subsystems ha can have a, an a impact on the whole system, so if we don't understand uh, the interactions or even the subsystems, that becomes very difficult. So, you know, it's hard to understand the total system by only studying the subsystem. If we know all we can know about cells, that doesn't mean we'll know how organs work. There's time lags. Time, uh, with time lags, cause and effect can be really separated. Uh, for example, um, you know, if we emit, in this case, nuclear waste, um, the effects on ecosystems might not be seen for thousands of years. So that becomes hard to predict. Distance effects. Um, cause and effect can be separated by great distance. And here we have the example of PCBs and penguins. Um, we emitted certain chemicals. They were, they were useful in, for industry and they end up being in penguins in the south, uh, uh, the southern seas, the Antarctica. And basically, we didn't emit them down there, but they got down there and they impact uh, ecosystems down there. Nonlinear behavior. Our, our minds are really structured to think in straight lines. So when we're dealing with things that grow exponentially, like populations, Sometimes that's hard for us to keep in our minds without doing systems or systems modeling. Uh, again, population growth, a great example. Uh, and let, let's look at the, the general idea of complexity in systems. If we look at this, this you know, basic cartoon here of the interactions of uh, some organisms in an aquatic system, and you can see that's already pretty complicated 
And when we diagram that and put in the feedbacks and the forcing functions, again, this is the same ecosystem. You can imagine a, this is hard to predict, make predictions with, and that you might need things like computers to help you. Okay, let's look at this diagram here. Uh, again, this one really shows the complexity of an, of an ecosystem and the feedbacks. And what we have here is a, a diagram, a systems model of the Vietnam War. So again, this is an ecosystem. Um, and, you know, again, very complicated. And this was run using computers, and, and they, they, they said that the war was un, unwinnable. This was done in the 70s. But again, in the broader sense, this is an ecosystem as well. So we're going to stop there. And um, in this segment, you really got a basic idea of what an ecosystem was, uh, the structure of ecosystems, the function of ecosystems, and why ecosystems are, why it's hard to predict what they're going to do. So that's going to be important as we look at uh, further on in the course with disturbances and pollution and things like that. And you'll have a basic concept of how ecosystems work in that. So I'll see you next time in Global Environment.